all things Middle Earth here with a commander deep dive looking at the tier one evil man commander, Khaldun. In this video, we're going to break down the different troops you can use with Khaldun, the different items that I would suggest, what skills to use and how it would rank those on a scale of S through D, as well as what factions are going to benefit the most from using Khaldun. So stay tuned. All that is coming up in just one moment. <laughs> Okay, so we're talking about Khaldun today, and we're just going to jump right into it. Uh, this is the fourth Commander Deep Dive video I've done uh, with this style of how I've been doing things. And if you haven't seen those, uh, basically linked down below, I have a spreadsheet that I put together, and it's uh, on the screen right now. You'll see. And I've basically broken down these characters into four categories, looking at builds, ideal gear, ideal troops, and ideal faction uh, to hopefully provide the best overall look at these commanders. So kind of regardless of what respect level you have them at, uh, you can get some use out of them, hopefully, because if you see a video that suggests something that's at respect five, but you don't have that, it's kind of useless for you. So I'm trying to, as much as I can, provide uh, videos that show a couple of different options for you, where those options rank, which ones you should go for, things like that. So again, that spreadsheet is linked down below so definitely check that out if you'd like to follow along with me uh, but that's what I'm going to be referencing throughout this video so let's go ahead and jump into it first looking at Khaldun just giving a uh, kind of base overview of some of the stuff on Khaldun's kit Khaldun has the warrior perk which unlocks at level 20 which is going to give him a extra 25 might two skill points and he is going to do an extra 10 percent physical damage so pretty nice there for him especially since uh, he is going to be focusing on might so that extra might is nice next up we got the fang of the east as his r10 item he gets might and speed from this as well as speed for evil men and the ability is outburst on the first four rounds allied units damage they receive four percent less damage per refinement uh i would probably not suggest you go for this with Khaldun if you have met respect in or are going for it it's not a bad item but it's not going to be worth one like rushing to pay for in my opinion uh if over the course of time you really enjoy Khaldun, you've got him respect and you get this uh, great i think it can be a salt a solid thing for him but this is the respect 10 item for Khaldun. for those that are curious about that really quickly looking at his stats we're going to see that might is going to be the main focus here with his might at 1.95 per level then we've got 1.1 per level on focus and 1.13 per level on speed so he's fairly Fairly well balanced, but obviously uh, the might jumps up there almost twice as much as the other two, uh, which if you know how these different uh these different abilities work the might is going to increase the damage caused by units in the commander's army which we're going to reference in a bit as why that this is an important skill for him and why it's the thing that we're going to focus on with his builds as far as proficiency level goes i do have my Khaldun upgraded i have imparted wisdom to him four times with my uh my lower level gear i'm not going to suggest you go you do this right away with Khaldun. i think there are there are better commanders than Khaldun, but he's not a bad commander so if you're like me and you had a little bit more to do extra uh he's not a bad investment but again uh, I did that just so I could kind of play around with what points I have for him a little bit more so that's a really quick overview on just the character of Khaldun now let's go ahead and jump into the skills for him okay so there are two different builds I'm going to reference here again let me put the sheet up on the screen uh, if you look here at the columns we have the column C with the troop buff and then column D with the commander damage build so these are what the builds are and the priority from one through six of how you should stat those uh, and then the ranking of those is in the uh, the row 15 here uh, and so uh, we're going to look at the troop buff build first which I I have ranked at an A, so S through D. It's sitting at an A, not, maybe not the best tier one, but close or if not tied for in terms of tier one evil commanders uh, based on the conversations we're having in the Discord, which by the way is linked below. If you want to join us on Discords for these conversations happening, I'm not just making all this information up. This is stuff that we're having uh, conversations with multiple, multiple people uh, to try and figure out the best information for these commanders in the game. So we communitively kind of ranked him at an A. Uh, so that is going to be going into the Marshal of the East Mark first, which is going to for melee units have a 50% chance of reducing damage they receive by 30%, followed by Tribal Tactics, which is going to give evil men a 25% of attacking twice. Next in this tree, we have Quicksand, which is going to be against two enemy targets. They're going to receive an extra 20% damage during combat, and they have a 10% chance of being stunned each round. And after you do Marshal of the East Mark, you're going to go ahead and go into Easterling and the adjacent skills there. I went ahead and switched my points around so you could see the max values for this, but this is for Khaldun the Commander. His normal attacks are going to cause enemy stats to drop by 20% for one round. So every, every round when he attacks, uh, it's going to drop their stats 20%, which is very nice. Then we have Evil Alliance, which is for evil men and orcs. They're going to receive 14% less damage. And then lastly, we have Iron Guard, which is going to have a 50% chance of reducing physical damage received by 30%. So similar to Marshall of the East Mark, there is the 50% chance, which 
Uh, you know, it seems like, I, I don't know, it seems like I get unlucky sometimes with, with these characters that have the 50% chance to do things. Uh, so I would definitely say, you know, if you wanted to even prioritize going Marshal of the East Mark and doing all these up here, uh, definitely go into Evil Alliance before Iron Guard. But again, very roughly put, that is the the build composition for Cal, uh, for Khaldun for the troop uh, the troop buffing build, which again is going to require Respect 5. It's going to be ranked at an A, uh, starting with Marshal of the East Mark, going down to Tribal Tactics and Quicksand, and then up to Easterling. Uh, with Evil Alliance and Iron Guard, I definitely think there could be some some conversations for e after Evil Ally or uh, sorry after Tribal Tactics after Marshal of the East Mark and Tribal Tactics, you could look at going down to Easterling next. Uh, but I do think Quicksand is solid. It's just going to allow those to, uh, it, those enemies to take more damage, uh, which is just going to be better for your troops. So. Just to keep it simple, I'm going to say Marshall, the East Mark, Full Tree, then Easterling, Full Tree, uh, starting with Tribal Tactics, then Quicksand, and then after Easterling, going Evil Alliance and Iron Guard for that, uh, for this build for him there. Okay, and next up for Khaldun is going to be an R3 Commander damage build. So this is going to be focusing on Commander uh, damage. Khaldun is going to do the damage here and also deal some poison damage as well. So the first thing we're going to go into here, as you see on the sheet, is going to be Spear Dancer, followed by Envenom and Brawler. So we have Spear Dancer, which is against one enemy target. Target, they deal 150% physical damage, then inflict 150% poison damage continuous uh, every round for one round. And the max little effect here is that the poison effect is going to extend by an extra round. Then we're going to go into Envenom next, which is going to cause normal attacks to cause an additional 75% poison damage. So we're going to get a lot of these different damage uh, multipliers to stack here, hopefully on him. And then lastly, here we have Brawler, which is against melee units. Khaldun's going to do an extra 25% damage. Now, if you are not quite to the point where you have enough points to do all these skills, Brawler could be one that is situational since it, it is only for melee troops, but there are a lot of melee troops in the game. So the chances of you at least coming against some are probably pretty high, but bear in mind that this one is situational on, on melee troops there. And lastly, for this build, after we go into Spear Dancer, we are going to go into Experienced Warrior. This is a ability that a lot of commanders have, so we won't spend too much time on it, but it's going to have his normal attack steal an extra 60% damage. Again, these are the max values here. And then at the max level, he's going to have an extra 10 damage against melee units. So again, a little bit more melee focus, which is fine. Uh, then we have Hunt Down, which is going to be after the commander attacks against the enemy target, uh, whoever the commander attacked, is going to have an extra damage, 11.2% uh, damage dealt to them, modified by the might stat uh, for two rounds and up to two stacks. So especially getting that might as high as possible, uh, it's just going to make that uh, even better for him there. And then collaboration, the normal attacks cause an additional 125% physical damage. So again, a lot of uh, uh, things where normal attacks are causing extra physical damage, extra poison damage. And when these different abilities line up, he's going to have some pretty big hits. Now, Khaldun is, is still solid with this build, but it is going to be ranked lower than the troop buff build. So if you have Khaldun at Respect 5, run the Respect 5 troop buff build. It is going to do better for you. Uh, it is dependent on what troops you have, obviously, which we're going to get to in a second. So there might be some variables there for you. But if you don't have them at Respect 5 and you have them at Respect 3, you can run this commander damage build, which is going to be ranked at a C, as you can see here, uh, which again is not terrible. Uh, but if we're looking at S through D, C is just above the kind of bottom level. Uh, there's still some usability with it. If you're free to play for just starting out, uh, at least running this and having some structure to his build instead of just doing random stuff is going to be better. Uh, but definitely go for that troop buff build if you can. But we're going to rank it at a C. Uh, and another point I wanted to make on just Khaldun and any commanders in general, if you are looking at these builds, and so usually I try and include some build that's focused on R1. I didn't put those this time, but basically if you have Khaldun at lower than respect three you can't run the commander damage build yet then you could focus on experienced warrior first and do this until you get to r3 since you'll more quickly get to r3 uh, from r5 so you're going to run experienced warrior and then once you get to r3 switch it to spear dancer and run both of those and then once you get to r5 you can switch the marshal of marshal of the east mark build uh, i feel like on its own easterling is not going to be as good obviously uh if you can run experienced warrior uh at the r1 then extra points can go into easterling it's still it's not going to hurt at all it is pretty complimentary to experienced warrior at least for easterling and evil alliance but again uh the main commander damage build there is going to be spear dancer with experienced warrior sitting at that uh, at that s or sorry that at the c rank there uh one other thing i wanted to point out on the sheet here this is going to be all, all the sheets moving forward from here and i may try and go back and add it to the other ones uh, i have this skill 
skill point calculator here. And so basically all you have to do is put in the different values, kind of answer the questions, and it's going to tell you how many skill points you have for your commander. So my Khaldun right here, as you can see, has 41 skill points. Actually, you can't see it. Hold on. Right there, you can see just below the camera here, we have uh, 41 points, uh, but just below where the base cam is. He has 41 skill points to use, which can kind of just give you an idea of where you're at with the commander. So I have here on the sheet uh, the total number of points needed to to max out this ideal build. Now, all that being said, you don't need 58 points like I have here to make these builds viable. Uh, you know, obviously the lowest priority skills here are not going to be as important as 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 the top ones. You know, Marshall, the East Mark, and Travel Tactics are a lot more important than than Iron Guard, for example. So just because you don't have enough to finish the last skill doesn't mean it's not useful, but just to give people a general idea of where their Khaldun is at and where he would need to be to max it out. So again, uh, if your commander's at level 20 plus with Khaldun, he gets two points to put a two there, put the commander's level, respect level, and proficiency level, and you get the total calculation. So I can see that I'm 17 points off from maxing out that build, if that makes sense. So I can look and say, well, yeah, basically I would need my Khaldun to be at level 47 to be maxed out here, or I need to take the respect up higher. Uh, so that's going to change depending on if you have proficiency levels or not, depending on what respect you have him at, all that kind of stuff. So I wanted to include that. That way people could at least see uh, they can plug in your, you can plug in your own numbers on that. Uh, it should work for plugging numbers. And I guess I'll, I will double check and make sure that works. Uh, but the, but again, the idea is there that basically you can add in these, these values. It's, it's these values here that add up to that uh, 41. So I wanted to point that out there for the skills there, but let's go ahead and move on to the ideal gear situations for Khaldun. So for Khaldun, Khaldun, I'm going to go through this a little bit more rapid fire. Uh, I do have two items up on the screen. Focus on the one here on the right side because I have to compare them so you can see the uh, the actual full values on these things since he's not fully uh, familiar with them. But we're looking at the ones on the right here, the sand claw uh, on down the list. So I'm going to suggest four gold items that I think, uh, just looking through my inventory that I had that I think would be very, very solid for Khaldun running a troop damage, a troop buffing build. Uh, but the idea here is that you want to focus on might because Khaldun's best build is going to be with him using troops. And if he has more might, the troops do more damage. If the troops do more damage, Khaldun does better. So you want to focus on might. You want to look for getting things that do army attack. Uh, and again, specifically for evil men, because his skill, uh, his um, Marshal of the East Mark tree has some uh, qualifiers for evil men specifically. So anything that does army attack for melee troops or for evil men, that's going to be fantastic. Or just for the entire army if you have that. But looking for army attack and then looking for abilities that just increase what the troops are doing, either increase the damage they deal or reduce the damage they take. So on the sand claw here, it's fine. It's not all focused on might, but it's good. It's got might. We have attack for the uh, army for the evil men, and then there it, there would be a better effect on the sand claw. I think there's one that just uh, increases damage done by melee troops for evil men. So I would go for that there. But again, we're looking for the might thing. We could go through and see uh, again if I had to pick between the two here. I I would go with the nightfall just because it's strengthened more but that's on someone else so uh, again anything like looking at a battle axe it just has all might uh and allied melee units that's fantastic but gear is very situational depending on how much you spend and what you have so even looking at something like the broad axe here the blue item it's got might it's got army attack for melee and allied melee units deal extra damage that is perfect if you're playing free to play something like the broad axe and there's kind of going to be examples like that for all of these i'm not going to go through every single detail but you get the idea in terms of what you want to focus on even going down to blue uh to blue items you can get some really solid stuff for him in fact this broad axe is giving him more might in the same army attack as the sand claw so just il illustrating that strengthened blues are better than non-strengthened gold so keep that in mind uh looking at these but let's kind of go through the other ones here looking at the armor piece uh we have the great plate of the east which is going to be focused for again uh, might would be better here, but I was more looking at the fact that this has HP for evil men and it does have fortitude of evil men. So in terms of the effect and the army HP, it's fantastic. If you have other options that focus on might, that's great. Uh, like I have this Berserker's Remnant, which is might, but it, it gets army HP for Urukai, which we're not going to be using. So that's not as ideal. Uh, something like this one here with the shroud, the defense, the might, that's fantastic. Uh, and again, you can keep going down the list. We got, again, this is focus, but we got army HP and it's it's a blue one. It's it's going to be fine because uh, the focus is going to help them reduce the damage they take. So focus is, is fine, but might is, if, if you can get might, go for it. Next up for the helmet, we have the Easterling helm, which is going to have might, focus, and army is going to get defense, which is going to be for evil men again. And this one's going to have a very good ability, resolve of evil men. Each round, they're going to have a chance of getting stun immunity. Uh, I believe fully refined, this is going to get to 100%. So every round with your troops having stun immunity, this would be uh, actually insane. So the Easterling Helm would be fantastic, but again, 
Casca Pride's fantastic. You got Might. You got uh, the defense. A lot of a lot of the items share the similar qualities in terms of like the helmet and the armor are going to have defense and HP and things like that. Uh, but sometimes there are outliers where uh, you can find some really good stuff where they where they really focus on Might. Like the full helm is just going to have Might. That's fantastic. Again, Skull Cap twenty five Might. That's fantastic. More Might than the Easterling helm's getting. So if I can't strengthen this helm up, I should probably go with the Skull Cap. So again, keeping that in mind. Focus gun might and evil men as much as possible. And then last but not least, we're going to look at the accessories here. Uh, I have a lot less accessories right now uh, than I would normally have, or ha I think I've ended up strengthening some things here. Uh, but I'm going to suggest from what I have, I think there are some other options. Again, just looking for might. I got a little bit of might here in the plantier of Orthanc. We get focus. Army attack, which is fantastic on the accessory. There are things like the drums of Moria, which are going to give army attack for melee. So that would be a fantastic one as well. And it's purple. Uh, and then also the plantier has the might of soldiers so allied melee units are going to deal extra damage so that's going to be fantastic for him as well but that is going to be some gear suggestions again don't get so hung up on the specific ones like this is not the perfect build these were solid ones and if i were to strengthen these up they'd be fantastic on on Khaldun. but anything that focuses on might strengthen it up uh he's he's going to be doing fine so uh just just focusing on might focusing on evil men focusing on army attack and uh, and things are just going to increase what the evil men are doing is going to is going to be just just fine for you and last but not least we're going to look at the troop suggestions for Khaldun and uh, as well as the faction suggestions now the troop suggestions are going to be pretty obvious because he needs evil men and there are really i believe in terms of not looking at hireable units, uh, there are only four different types of evil men. I guess if you count the tier four for rune, that makes more as well. Uh, but we have the skirmisher yurt, the mercenary yurt, and the pirate yurt. Any of these are going to be fantastic. And honestly, a combination of all three uh, is going to be is going to be solid for him. He's going to have some anti cavalry. He's going to have some anti range, and then you're going to have some burn damage uh, with the arson ability from the corsair corsairs, as well as some possible damage avoidance for him there. So these are all going to be fantastic units, uh, as well as looking at Angmar's tier four, the fallen. This is an evil man troop technically as well. Uh, I feel like they honestly seem like they would be closer to undead, but it is evil man. So. Uh, fantastic, fantastic tier four troop there. So any of those evil men are going to be great. And in that same vein, I'm going to su suggest Rune as the best starting faction for Khaldun. So if you've just started as Rune and you're, you know, trying to decide between commanders and you have Khaldun, he's going to be a great option because you have the evil men so uh, readily available right away. Now playing as Angmar, I've been slacking a bit here. It would not be that hard for me to get these upgraded and have some of these guys. But Angmar is the last faction to get access to evil men. However, Angmar has, I believe, the best evil man tier four unit uh, of of the, of the war chariot. I don't think anyone's going to argue with that one. So Angmar down the road, once they get their tier four, is going to have a really cool option for Khaldun to use with the with the Fallen Knights. And you can do the Fallen Knights with any combination of these guys as well, or you could run all Fallen Knights if you wanted to. Uh, but again, the suggestion is going to be go for Rune, but Angmar can be a good secondary. It will take Angmar longer to get. So I, I would say for Angmar, Khaldun would not be an amazing starting commander. But if you've been playing as Angmar like I have, I've been playing for more than a month in the server or whatever, and you have evil men available, then I think Khaldun could be could be um, could be awesome for you. So Rune's going to be the ideal there, and then we're going to look at Angmar as a secondary, but as a starting commander, which uh, you know as tier one, you they, I think in Rune you start with him. He's he's great. You can run the evil men with him, and he's going to do just fine. But again, that has been our Khaldun video. Hopefully you found it helpful. Again, if you want to join us on the Discord, let's go full Khaldun up here. If you want to join us on the Discord, we're having conversations like this about each commander. We're going to be talking about either Boromir or Haldir next. I think Haldir got more votes for the next one. So we're going through all the tier one commanders. That's linked down below in the Discord. Shoot me a message and just let me know you want to get the role for getting in the Build Videos channel uh, because I want to get as much feedback as possible because this is the kind of game where it's really difficult for one person to master every single commander in the game. But a group of people can come together and hopefully get some good information. So that's what we're trying to do. The sheets linked down below if you want to reference back to that or share it with people, take a screenshot of it, uh, whatever it is. There's stuff, uh, I'll, have put it, I'll have put it up on the screen throughout the video. So feel free to take screen shots or do whatever you want to do and pass it around uh, but again that is Khaldun I hope you enjoyed it and as always I'll see you in the next video